A shooting inside of a local grocery store. Two people are now dead. What we know coming up. Plus new training for area officers. It's adding an extra week for new recruits to help them better understand their community. And a massive jackpot. It's record breaking and your odds may be slim, but we're talking Powerball just ahead. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. And thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast for you on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. I'm Leon Harris. And I'm Jim Adley. On this Friday, November 4th, we begin with new details now on a shooting inside of a grocery store in Prince George's County. A security guard and a shoplifting suspect are dead. The shooting happened at the Giant Grocery Store in Eastover Shopping Center in Oxon Hill, Maryland. News 4's Derek Ward has more. 10.25 a.m. Things are beginning to pick up as shoppers make their way to this giant grocery store on Route 10 in Oxon Hill, the Eastover Shopping Center. No one could have anticipated gunfire, but witnesses say they heard lots of it. At least five rounds. A woman and a man, a security guard at the store, both died. As police pieced the scene together, they believe that not everyone at this giant came to shop. What appears to be is that the adult female was inside the grocery store attempting to commit a theft. Police say that woman was approached by the security guard at the front of the store. During this encounter, the adult female removed a handgun from her backpack and began firing rounds at the security guard, causing the security guard to return fire. Both were hit. The woman was rushed to the hospital where she was pronounced dead a short time later. The security guard died at the scene. Yeah, he was a pretty good guy, man. Pretty good guy. Others who knew the guard say he was dedicated to his work, but also understanding and patient during the all too frequent thefts from this store. There have now been three deaths at the shopping center in two days. A man was stabbed to death here at Eastover Wednesday, an apparent robbery. The store video shows a suspect who's still at large. One killing a day or two ago and then another one right here. And what's terrible is you have a police substation here. The police department is committed. There's a reason our police department uh, has a division right in the shopping center. And that's for, you know, the safety and security of these citizens that we partner with on a daily basis. Police say no one else in the store was injured by gunfire and they're reviewing security video and witness accounts to see if the woman was alone at the time. And we're asking the community to partner with us even more to try to stop these violent brazen attacks that are occurring in our shopping centers. To me, you want to shoot, go to war. Now, police are asking for any witnesses to come forward after a man was found dead outside of a parking garage near the Kennedy Center this morning. Officers were first called to the Kennedy Center parking garage on F Street Northwest for reports of a shooting around 730 in the morning. They found a man with what they described as new and old trauma injuries. But they're not sure if the injuries were caused by gunshots. D.C. Police Chief Robert Conte said the man may have walked to the garage entrance when he collapsed, but it's unclear where he sustained his injuries. I'm not exactly sure if there was some type of assault or something that took place prior to this, uh, and there was untreated injuries, and which ultimately led to, to where we are now. Police are using video surveillance from the Kennedy Center to help in the investigation. But if you were in that area around 730 this morning or earlier, call police, call D.C. police to see if you can help them out. There's going to be a uh, new required training for police cadets in Montgomery County. Yeah, the Informed Police Training Act requires cadets to train for 30 hours to better understand racial justice. It also aims to better equip these officers to be community guardians. They've partnered with Montgomery County to make it happen. That we can always look at ourselves in the mirror and always do better than we did the day before. Um, there's always improvements in any profession. I mean, we'll never stop looking at the opportunity to do that. There will also be continuing education for current officers. There are four days now left to vote in the midterm elections. Yeah, here we go. The races that could shift the balance of power in the U.S. Senate are so tight they could go either way. Pennsylvania is one of those races. Democrat John Fetterman is running against Dr. Mehmet Oz. Oprah Winfrey has known Oz for nearly 20 years, so her endorsement of his opponent overnight is making headlines. Said it was up to the citizens of Pennsylvania, and of course, but I will tell you all this, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I would already cast my vote for John Fetterman for many reasons. 
Oprah Winfrey gave Dr. Oz his start in TV before he launched his own talk show in 2009. The Oz campaign released a statement saying Dr. Oz loves Oprah and respects the fact that they have different politics. The statement adds that Oz believes there should be more balance and less extremism in Washington. Hey, we've got some big news for our region. Washington will host World Pride Day in 2025. That's going to be the 50th anniversary year of D.C.'s Pride Day celebrations. It'll run from May 23rd through June 8th. Now, the entire world is being invited as D.C. will host World Pride Day for two weeks of events that will include education focusing on the LGBTQ communities. Uh, it is extremely exciting. Uh, D.C. is uh, prime for hosting major events, and D.C. is known as one of the queerest uh, communities, cities in the United States of America. They couldn't have picked a better place. That's what we say here because NBC4 is going to be a broadcast partner for the event, and we're proud and happy That's to do so. Right. It's going to be big. Two years. Hey, the first Silver Diner in D.C. partnered with the local charity Real Food for Kids to get meals directly to families in Ward 8. Kids from Cedar Tree Academy had breakfast at the diner this morning. You can help get meals to Ward 8 families by joining the Real Food for Kids raffle. You've got two more days to sign up. All the details are on NBCWashington.com. Just look under Silver Diner in our section in the community. Now, if you're looking for some fun things to get into this weekend, you don't have to go very far. Tommy's our guy. News for us. Tommy McFly breaks down what's going on in the weekend scene. With the clocks falling back, that means an extra hour of weekend and potentially record high temps. According to Storm Team 4, grab some patio dining. DMV Black Restaurant Week kicks off on Sunday. Have dialogue around your food with the person next to you, and I guarantee you, you will experience Washington like never before. In a room full of people who look like you, understand your story, understand where you come from, and maybe had similar experiences, and then can also connect with your creation in that way, is, is absolutely beautiful. Go visit your faves, or better yet, explore and experience something new. Side Yards is back. It's the seventh year, starting five o'clock tomorrow at the Yards in Southeast. Magicians, escape artists, sword swallowers, the weird, the wild, the fun. Plus, it's free. Just make sure you register ahead of time for the big event. And right next door at Nats Park, DC Beer Fest is back. Live music, lawn games, unlimited tastings. Channel your inner builder during the big build tomorrow at the National Building Museum. Throw on a hard hat, use some tools, dozens of interactive stations, maybe get some new skills or find a new hobby. The fun kicks off at 11 a.m. And if you have already hit play on Mariah Carey, you're going to love this. The Czech Republic Christmas Market is Saturday. It's everybody. It's everybody. That's what makes this event so special. It's not just people, you know, that have been to the Czech Republic or, you know, are of Czech descent. Uh, it, this art market really attracts everyone from all walks of life um, in the D.C. area. The embassy is right on Rock Creek Park. Plus, bonus, there's plenty of parking. Get the Weekend Scene newsletter, too. Our team is working for you with new details from the Hirshhorn on their extending the Yayo Kasuma exhibit. They are changing the way you can get access. Sign up now at NBCWashington.com slash Weekend Scene. Get the scoop on Wednesday afternoon. I'm Tommy McFly. Have a great extra long weekend. Hey, By one hour. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Hey, the Powerball Lottery jackpot has entered record territory. Lottery officials announced today that the grand prize is now up to $1.6 billion. The cash option, a one-time payment of $782 million. The last time someone won the jackpot was back on August 3rd, and the jackpot has been just rolling over and over and increasing since then. The largest jackpot ever won, by the way, $1.5 billion, which was split between three winning tickets. That happened back in 2016. The I'll next... split it four ways, okay? <laughs> if I win, I'll do it four ways. Well, the next drawing is Saturday night, so you and I, let's talk on Sunday. Let's. <laughs> okay. I like that, or we won't. We'll just go into hiding, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. That's going to do it for us on a Friday for the News 4 Rundown. Don't forget to check your latest Storm Team 4 forecast in our weather playlist. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Hadley. And I'm Leon Harris. Have a great weekend, and we'll catch you next week.